Hi, this video is intended to show you how to solve mixture problems, but using a method that's slightly different from the one that's in the textbook. The thing I love about this method is it applies to any mixture problem. And as you'll see later in the video, not only does it apply to the traditional mixture problems, it also applies to the traditional interest problems. Okay, the first concept that we have to understand in order to be able to do these problems is that the whole times the ratio is equal to the part. So let's look at this example with eggnog. Suppose that eggnog contains milk and 70% of the eggnog is milk. Now we want to know how much milk is in 16 ounces of eggnog. Okay, so the first thing that we would do is we would use this formula whole times ratio is equal to part. And we can summarize it right here, W times R is equal to P. Now in this case, the whole is the whole product, which is the eggnog. So the W, the whole here, is the amount of eggnog, which they tell us is 16 ounces. R is the ratio or the percent of eggnog that is made up of the milk. That's 70%. And the P in this case is going to be the amount of milk contained in the eggnog. So now, using the formula, W times R is equal to P. 16, that's the W, that's the whole, the amount of eggnog, times R, the ratio or the percent. That's the, um, that's the percentage of the eggnog that is milk, or the percent, or it's the amount of milk in a percentage form contained in the eggnog. Okay? So you get 16 times 0.7 is equal to P, and P is equal to 11.2 ounces. We're now going to take this concept and we're going to use it to solve a traditional mixture problem using an acidic solution. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to look at, how many liters each of a 7% acidic solution and a 16% acidic solution should be mixed together in order to make 300 liters of a 10% acidic solution. Okay, so in this case we have two unknowns. We don't know how much of the 16% acidic solution we should use. We do not know how much of the 7% acidic solution we should use. All right, well, what we're going to do here is we're going to come up with two variables to represent the two unknowns. X is going to represent the amount of the 16% acidic solution. Y is going to represent the amount of the 7% acidic solution. Now, notice we have three rows. The first row, okay, starting right here with the X and going across, that is for the 16% acidic solution. The second row, starting with the Y and going across, that is the 7% acidic solution. And the last row, starting with the M, is the mixture. Now, let's look at the three columns. W is the whole. X is the amount of the 16% acidic solution. Y is the amount of the 7% acidic solution. And they told us we have 300 of the mixture. Now, let's look at the R column next. That is the percent or the ratio. Okay, what percent of the first solution is acidic? 16%. What percent of the second solution is acidic? 7%. What percent of the mixture is acidic? 10%. Finally, we come over to the last column on the right, the P. How do we, now, the P represents the amount of acid in each solution. How do we get that? Well, W times R is equal to P. So we take the X times the 0.16. That gives us 0.16X. That's the amount of acid in the first solution. Y 
times 0.07 is 0.07y. That's the amount of acid in the second solution. And finally, for the mixture, we have 300 times 0.10 is 30. So the amount of acid in the mixture is 30. Well, we have two unknowns. We need two equations. We normally get the equations by summing up the W column and the P column. The X plus the Y should equal 300. The 0.16X plus the 0.07Y is 30. We never use the R column to set up an equation. Okay, so now, as we just spoke about, we have X plus Y is 300. That comes from the W column. And 0.16X plus 0.07Y is 30. That comes from the P column. You have a system of... Uh, um, a system of equations, solve for x and y, and you get x is 100 and y is 200. All right, next we're going to apply this w times r is equal to p approach to an interest problem. Okay, Jackie inherited $5,000. She puts some money into an account that pays 3% interest each year and she puts the balance into an account that pays 2% interest each year. How much should she put into each account in order to make $140 in interest for the year? So we have two unknowns, the amount of money that goes into the 3% account and the amount of money that goes into the 2% account. Okay, now we're gonna set this up pretty much the same way that we did our traditional mixture problem. In this case, the W represents the amount of money in each account. So X is the amount of money in the 3% account. Y is the amount of money in the 2% account. And there was a grand total of $5,000 that got invested into the two accounts total. Now, R is the interest rate, 3%, 2%, and unlike the traditional mixture problem, we do not put a value in the last row for the rate. That is left blank. You see an X there, nothing is entered in an interest problem. Now, P in this case represents the amount of interest. How do we get the P? Well, just as we did in the traditional mixture problem. The W times the R is the P, 0.03x, 0.02y, and the amount of interest total is $140. That was given to us in the problem. Okay, now, we just like we did with the mixture problem, we sum up the W column. X plus Y is 5,000. And we sum up the P column, 0.03x plus 0.02y is 140. Solve those systems of equations, and you get x, which is the 3% amount, is $4,000. y, which is the 2% amount, is $1,000. And that is how you use the W times R is equal to P approach for mixture problems and interest problems.